you very much, Captain Murphy, and thank you to the men and women of the Los Angeles Police Department. Um, thank you to your great work. Uh, the people of Silver Lake can breathe a little easier today. Um, they can have a little uh, reassurance that justice has been served and the bad guys are in jail um, and the community is a little safer due to the great work of this department. And we have a very simple message for those who continue to commit crimes in our community that you will get caught and you will go to jail. Today we see the evidence of that. These are some of the weapons and um, some of the paraphernalia that was uh, seized by our uh, good police officers. You see the connection between drugs and guns. You see the connection between property crimes and fueling both of that. Um, and obviously that is something which we comprehensively and each want to do in a strategic way, whether it's in um, crews or whether it's uh, crews that are affiliated with gangs. We seek to break these up to make sure that people can walk safely whether it's to school, whether it's to restaurants, whether it's home at night, uh, these are our streets and not their streets. But what is critical to remember is that just because arrests were made, there is still as much importance of, of, for each of us as individuals to be vigilant, to make sure you do not make yourself a victim. Uh, wearing an iPod late at night walking by yourself makes you a victim. Walking by yourself potentially makes you a victim. Being in dark places potentially makes you a victim. And you have to do all you can to protect yourself to make sure that those opportunities are not as attractive to would-be criminals as the police continue to do their good work to make this safer. Well, um, and I want to thank the members of the community, many of you who called us, people who gave tips, um, information. That is really what makes us safe in the long term, uh, to be able to have that cooperation and coordination. But it's true, sometimes there's bad people out there, and we want to prevent you from experiencing bad people. And simple tips, you know, and we think about, I see it all the time in L.A., people talking on their phones as they're walking down the street. And all of a sudden, some of them comes up behind you and you're a victim. Uh, some of these people were victims because they were on their phones instead of having uh, the awareness of where they are. We are going to ask our Public Works Department, Bureau of Street Lighting, look at lighting some of these streets a little better. Uh, and we should look at that at all our business districts. And are we going to encourage local businesses who have businesses there to light their, their sites as well. We want people to get out and enjoy. When we're going to stimulate our economy is when we're out in our communities and uh, and, and, and engaging in our businesses and our enterprises there. So I When this uh, really exploded on us last Monday, we immediately addressed it. We came out with a press conference uh, that both uh, the president and council president and the council member were at. Captain Smith ad addressed everybody. We put it out there. <coughs> the next night we were in the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council and we gave a presentation to them. And as uh, council member Laban stated, we had a fantastic community meeting down at the Ivanhoe Elementary School where probably 400 or so people come up. Not only did they pack the auditorium, they were in the parking lots because the, the citizens were very, very concerned and we, we hear you, we hear you 100%. What I said that night though is we were already on that. We spent so much time and we have such good officers that we can identify patterns and trends. And I, I told them while I couldn't give specifics, we knew what gangs were involved in this and we were already behind the scenes working it. What happened on, on Saturday night, this goes back to the arrest, go back to Saturday night, our uh, officers had identified who two of the uh, suspects were. They're actually, we'll call them subjects because they're juveniles. Through their experience uh, working with the gangs, they knew who they were. And do, using good investigative techniques, that was part of that process too. We went ahead and we put undercover officers in locations where we would believe, based on our experience, that they would go. We ended up detaining six uh, individuals. Uh, two of them uh, we ended up arresting for robbery out of that. Two others we arrested for other crimes, and two at that time we released. We obtained a search warrant on the homes of the, the subjects that we arrested. Based on that search warrant and the subsequent investigation, we recovered these two guns as well as a lot of uh, cell phones that are up here and iPods. Uh, from that moment, we begin backtracking. What occurs is victims, when they have cell phones taken, iPods taken, that goes into the crime investigation, it goes down into reports. Our detectives have been working feverishly to tie these uh, items, which we believe many of them to be stolen, taken in robberies, back to victims. To date, we have been able to tie these uh, subjects to three robberies. Two are involved in the Silver Lake, which is the northern cluster 
that we were talking about. There's two clusters, one really in Echo Park of six uh, robberies and one in Silver Lake of four. We've been able to tie two of the Silver Lake to these subjects. In addition, we were able to tie them to another crime, which is in Rampart area, which proves that the, they were mobile, that they were out there in the streets, that they were looking for victims. Uh, we already talked about how to prevent yourself from being a, a robbery <coughs> suspect or any crime, uh, any victim of a crime. In the middle of the night, you know, please, it's a good idea to walk in groups. If you're out there at 2 o'clock in the morning, don't be uh, having your you know, music, uh, whatever the Walkman on your, your ears and your uh, cell phone and your iPod. So I'm a little bit older, so I, I probably have to talk to my daughters and I'm getting the latest in the technology. But uh, yeah, you know, what happens with suspects is they're going to look for the victim that's the easiest to take down. So if you're by yourself, this is common sense. I probably don't have to tell you this, but you're by yourself there late at night. You're not paying attention to where you are you can make yourself uh, a victim out there. And we, by all means, we don't want to do that. Uh, we did, our gang officers knew both of the ones that we ended up, the robbery subjects. Uh, they knew them because they're out there you know, each and every night. They work 10 hours a shift. Uh, the way we do gang uh, kind of strategies is each of the officers are experts on certain gangs and part of their role is to go out there and build up intelligence. Uh, for us to be successful in solving gang crimes, we need the gang officers to know who the gang members are. So Were they arrested on the street, in a home? Uh, I don't think that that would matter, right? Uh, yeah, we, they were in the street. We took them like, down in the street. Where, where in Silver Lake, Echo Park? Well, in the vicinity of, of where they live. And because they're subjects, we, we can't release, unfortunately, the their pictures and other stuff. They, when they're juveniles or subjects that we call, there are certain uh, criteria we have to keep confidential, honestly. But were, were they actually involved in some sort of... No, no, no. We, we, were, we were simply looking, looking to them. apprehend okay. them. So when we found them, we took them into custody. We would have took them into custody anywhere, obviously in their house. That requires a warrant, but uh, that's so we got them on the street. And then did a search warrant back into their home. So Where does that so that make sense? Live? Silver Lake, Oak Park? Yeah, that was, uh, was that in the Silver Lake, technically? East Hollywood. East Hollywood. East Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. Captain, do you believe these two subjects are responsible for this entire string, or are you still looking for additional no, subjects? No, we're, we're looking. We, we're looking into that. Uh, the investigation's ongoing. So far, out of the north ones, which is the Silver Lake, they're responsible for two out of the four. Uh, but that's an ongoing investigation. Uh, again, we, it's possible that they're involved in others. We can't say that now. And uh, they definitely did do other robberies in other parts of the city. Rampart's a different police uh, area, and they did robberies down there, so they're probably mobile. But Council, Mr. Garcetti or uh, Captain Murphy, I don't know which of you can answer this, but there was a lot of concern brought up, too, at that meeting that some of the victims were targeted because they were perhaps homosexual. Can you address that, please? Yeah, well, no, we have no uh, evidence at all that that was the case. Uh, we believe that they were just targeted because they were the, the best uh, robbery victims that, that they could find. Some of these, the range of the, the actual victims ranges from you know juveniles to adults. There are different uh, races involved. Uh, the commonality is single males, is, is that, and males. Okay, and the two um, juvenile boys, can you tell us the ages? Yes, uh, 15 and 16 years old. Suspected gang members. Yes. Well, they, they may be, uh, I think they're, they're, in, our database, yeah, they're in our database. So.